Hey, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Parkinson's Gym. I'm Zach. Here's Gus. Gus has joined us today, even just for a little while. All right. Gus doesn't have, well, you have shoulders. You kind of have two sets of shoulders, maybe just two sets of hips. Today, we're going to be talking about shoulders. Shoulders give a lot of people a lot of problems, and that's not just uh, due to Parkinson's. Shoulders are a very complex joint um, that, that have to be worked, have to be focused on, and have to be very um, consciously uh, helped. They don't just do their thing without any activity or without any really focus. So a lot of the stuff uh, we're going to work on today, you're going to need bands and weights. So what I recommend for today is that you have a fairly light band, a single strand band, and a medium band. So what I have is about an 8 pound and about a 13 pound band, and they're a single strand on a mount at about chest or shoulder height. So we'll be using that the whole time. You can vary this around, and I'll talk about that a little bit. But if you have this right at shoulder height, it's going to serve you perfectly well. Also, what you need are probably two, maybe three sets of weights. A couple that are really light, like three, two, even maybe no weight. Uh, those, are, those are easy to come by the zero weight dumbbells. And then some mediums at about, you know, five, eight, depending on how much you want to push. That is your normal range of, uh, of typical shoulder exercises. So we'll get into that. Uh, but first, I want to talk about the anatomy of your shoulders. That's kind of important. So let's go. All right, let's talk about the anatomy of the shoulder. It is complicated. As you can tell, is our, our, our Da Vinci looking dude with the invisible skin. Let's start simple. Three bones, humerus, which is the upper part of your arm. I always find that funny. <laughs> the scapula, your shoulder blade, and your clavicle, which is your collarbone. Three bones. They all come to a point and uh, they make up your shoulder. There you go. Oh, and by the way, sports health. Big thanks to them for these uh, fantastic pictures. Three bones, four joints. Not a big deal. You got the two out on the end, the AC joint and the glenohumeral joint, which are kind of the ones you always think about with a shoulder. But then there is a joint in the back is where your shoulder blade sort of slides back and forth over your ribs, not really over your ribs, but over the muscles of your ribs. And then this one over here, it's sort of the lever arm of it all from your sternum to your collarbone. That's it. Four joints. But then there are these little rotator cuff muscles. You hear a lot about these. Oh, I tore my rotator cuff. Well, it's bigger than that. So if you just take your hand and sort of grab the end of your shoulder, your fingers are sitting exactly where the rotator cuff muscles sit. There's one in front, one on top, one in back, and a little kind of weird one going from back down at a funny little angle. And that's, it's that simple. You probably will never need to know the name of these muscles unless you tear one. Then you'll know it intimately. The ligaments in bursa are really the lubrication and the tie down straps. There's lots of them. They hold bone to bone and they keep everything sliding around and happy. The labrum deserves some attention to the labrum is just the, um, well, I say just, it is actually a very important part of the shoulder and it's, it gets a lot of damage. So you ought to know what it is. It's the slick part between the humerus and the scapula. It's really what keeps the um, keeps everything sliding around. It weirdly, it is also where the long hip head of the biceps comes all the way up into the shoulder and connects. Um, this is something that easily gets torn and is pretty painful. It can get torn from overuse in a certain motion. It can get torn from injury. It can get torn from arthritis. There's all sorts of uh, ways that it can get torn up and cause a good bit of pain. So having a nicely balanced shoulder can be very important for the labor. The nerves and the blood vessels, really the only thing important you need to know about those are that they all go through your armpit. So that is a very, very important part of your body. Nerves go through there, blood goes through there, and it tends to smell bad. That's really all you need to know about that. The big muscles of the back, they call the superficial muscles, kind of the big ones. What you're looking at here, the trapezius is the big, like, no-neck muscle. It's a trapezoid on the back. And then the deltoid is kind of your shoulder cap muscle. And, of course, your lats down here. So you may be noticing that most, if not all, well, all except for your, uh, well, inner organs and your core 
all of the muscles above your hips move your shoulders. And if they don't move your shoulders, they're kind of like the uh, rhomboids here. They move your shoulder blade, which moves your shoulders. So the big ones all attach to your shoulder. The little ones, they're all attached to your shoulder too. So this one either moves your head down or your shoulder up. Even your triceps on the back of your arm, they reach up and under here and hang on to uh, your uh, scapula, your shoulder blade. On the front, you've got the simple ones, the big uh, pectoralis, you know, the bro pecs. But underneath, there's the deltoid again, that shoulder cap. Underneath, you have your pectoralis minor, uh, or there's your subscapularis from the back as part of your uh, rotator cuff. But the pectoralis minor is underneath there. It grabs hold of your humerus. Even your biceps come on and hang on to your shoulder blade. They're all part of the, the team here. That is a very, very simple, basic uh, anatomy of your shoulders. It's complicated. You got to take good care of them. Now you're all smart about shoulders. The very first thing you want to do when you start working your shoulders is set to them. So what I want you to do is just open your palms forward and you'll feel your shoulders just kind of naturally roll back into their pockets. So what happens a lot, especially now, is as we're moving through our day, um, all, everything we use, phones, tablets, TVs, food is all dogs are all right here in our lap. And that tends to wear out the front portion of your labrum uh, in your shoulder. And that can be very painful because then you have bone on bone contact. So doing this puts the shoulders back where they're supposed to be. You'll feel a little bit of tension across the back of your shoulders. And that's good. But it puts that ball socket right back nice straight into where it's supposed to be. All right, so once you've got that set up, what we wanna do is just the four basic motions of what shoulders do. Push and pull horizontally, push and pull vertically. So push and pull horizontally can be pretty easy. So what I wanna show you is the simplest one. Grab your band, well the simplest one, push-ups. But uh, you know, not always push-ups on the floor. So you can do push-ups on a counter, on a seat back, uh, on your knees, or even on the walls. But also with these bands, what you have is sort of double purpose here. Long straight pushes directly from your shoulders all the way out. And you'll notice your core is rotating too. Straight out, man, let's get about 10 of these. Two, three. Don't look at me like that, Gus. Five, full extension. Six, rotate through the core. Seven, eight, nine, and 10. Exact same thing on the other side. Whoop, here we go. Rotate, push. You're kind of in a boxer stance here. Rotate, push and push. I want this pretty light. You're not, this isn't heavy duty yet. This is very light to medium resistance just to get some warmth, to get stuff moving around inside of your shoulders. You can even do 12 to 15 reps. All we're doing is warming things up. All right, now let's turn that motion exactly opposite. Archers, I call this, straight out anchors directly in front of you and just pull to your shoulder elbow back all the way out elbow back you can stand back a little further and get a little bit of rotation you're not extending this behind you I want the highest tension tight into your shoulder blades burnt all the way out all the way in you're not going to here all the way out all the way in. Other side, a few more. Should be feeling a little bit of warmth, a little bit of action, a little bit of stress. Middle of your shoulders, between your shoulder blades, at like your rhomboids. Three, two, one. Hey, good, good, good. Okay. Here's where those light weights can come in handy. We want to do nice, smooth, easy, vertical press through your shoulders. Okay, big lesson number two. Setting your shoulders was number one. Big lesson number two. Do not do this, elbows out. Your shoulders are not meant to do that. Elbows forward, press straight up. Don't pinch over your head either. Go weights straight up from your shoulders. Kind of see the difference? Elbows are like forward, elbows out. 
badness, badness happening there. Press straight up. You keep doing those presses and I'll explain why that's bad. You have humorous, like we talked about, and clavicle. Together, they create your AC, a chromioclavicle clavicular joint. Within that joint, they create a pinch point. 12, 15 reps. If you go above your shoulders on this outside arc, you are risking pinching and damaging all the stuff that rolls over the top of your humerus. So, this avoids that. This front motion avoids that. This motion is just, just playing with fire. If you just want to get shoulder surgery, do a whole bunch of those. I, that's my recommendation. All right, vertical pull is a tough one to get. Unless you have some kind of mount on the ceiling, a vertical pull can be tough. What you can do is like a leaning pull with your bands. So lean over and a straight pull in. Brace yourself with your other leg, pull straight in. This isn't great, but I want you to imagine pulling your elbow into your ribs. And we're just getting the motion through the shoulder. Switch sides, stride out here, pull all the way in. The further you can lean over, the more vertical it is for your body. So this is the lat pull machine and the pull-ups you see in the, the bro weight rooms. We now have all of the four movements through your shoulders. Pull, push in the horizontal, push, pull in the vertical. So. Your shoulders should be nicely warmed up. The next thing we want to get into is, well, let me show you something, something kind of fun. Get a heavier band or even just both of your bands and set up a little bit of traction. So I don't know, I may slide off your screen here, but all you're doing is a little bit easy pull. Relax your arm as much as possible and just let it give a slight, slight pull deep in your shoulder, just a little bit. I'm not talking try to rip your arms off like a Wookiee. I'm talking just a little bit of easy pull. Wallow it around slightly. It lets that synovial fluid kind of move into your shoulder, make things happy. Just a little bit of traction and pull, kind of wallow it around slightly, both shoulders, directly out, 90 degrees out from your shoulder, and let it wallow around. Nice, that feels good, feels. I don't know what it is about that. Just kind of opens up the joint a little bit and kind of brings some, some healthy life into it. Okay, rotator cuff muscles. We talked about the four rotator cuff muscles. Get your lightest band and less rock and roll. You will need, or at least imagine, that you have a towel in between your ribs and your elbow. Your band anchor is directly out your right side. You have the handle in your left side. 90 degree bend in your elbow, and I want you to crank this open with your elbow stuck to your ribs. Crank open that way. And open up your shoulder, set it wide, crank it open. Should not be heavy. By isolating the movement like this, you're only hitting the rotator cuff muscles. You're not getting into the big muscles like the trapezius and the pectoralis and all that mess. Okay, switch hands facing the same direction. Now you're going to be pulling into your body. If you notice you're doing this a lot, give yourself a prop, like a towel or something like this, to hold between your elbow and your ribs so that you do not let your elbow depart your ribs. Just kind of a little trick for yourself. Crank it in. So this one is working your subscapularis of those rotator cuff muscles. That's that weird one that grabs up here, but it ducks under and goes on inside of your shoulder blades. Frequently damaged because it's a pushing motion. All right, same exact thing uh, facing the other way. So elbow tight. Left hand, anchor is out the left side, pull into your body. I apologize for you having to look at my back here, but it might be good to see it from the other perspective. Shoulder open and flat. 10 to 12 of those, nice and smooth. 
Body is not moving. You're not letting anything happen in your core. Everything else is perfectly still. Right hand, it's out the left side. Elbow glued here and crank open. Don't do this. Elbow stays stuck to your ribs. Crank, closed, crank, closed. Wide shoulders, no movement from your upper portion of your arm, your humerus. Crank open. All right, that's a weird perspective, but it's a good exercise. Okay, last one, hitting the two vastus minor, vastus major muscles that are also part of your, the vastus minor is part of your rotator. Arms straight out, a little bit of tension, and press way back behind you. Out and press. Still very light. Press. You can definitely get some weight to this one. This is not a bad exercise with heavy weight, but right now you don't need it. Press. Up. Press. Up. Press. Okay? Switch sides. Now at any time through this video or any time you are working on your shoulders or just stand around and you feel something that is just wrong, very painful, and doesn't feel like something that exercise is going to work, go see your doctor. Go see a doctor. I am not a doctor. I can help you work out just kind of basic daily stiffness and keep your joints healthy, but I cannot heal a broken joint. And, and no amount of exercise can heal damage. If something is torn, something is stressed, something is ruptured, you got to have that looked at and dealt with appropriately. You're going to do long-term damage. Okay, vertical push, and I think we're all set there. So you've got open, closed on both sides, one, two, three, four, and then press and press, left side, right side. The very last one you can do, we will do it with both bands and dumbbells. So what you're doing, best way to see this is from the front. Let me show you the dumbbells first then. You do one at a time, you do both. I want you to go up perfectly in sort of a scarecrow position. Your upper arms are level, your forearms are level, and you're gonna open vertical. Back down, vertical. Your elbows stay exactly the same point in space. You're getting that external rotation that we really don't get very much, that when we do, it tends to make injury. So we're working that. This is light, and if this feels a little whiffy, put down the weights, do them open, do them with nothing. So open as far back as you can. And if again, if there's any pain, knock it off. Open, close. The way you do this with the bands is good too. All the bands really do is change that um, direction of resistance. Elbow stays exactly at one point in space and you rotate back. Perfect 90 degrees in the elbow and rotate it back. This one's tough. You're gonna need some pretty light bands to make this work. You're gonna feel it deep in the shoulder. Woof. Anybody, even the strongest macho Ironman Olympic athlete is gonna feel a little bit of burn from these exercises. Other side, elbow up, crank it open. Up, crank, up, crank. Keep perfect form. Don't let these decay into some abominable version of what they're supposed to be. Crank open and down. All right, again, lightweight, 10, 12, maybe even 15 of those, all the way around. Now, we've got deep warm-up, rotator cuff, all the stuff, parts and pieces are working and warmed up in there. So my analogy for joints, mainly hips and shoulders, is that it's like leather. All of the tendons and ligaments and stuff and packages and parts and pieces are like held together with leather bands. With leather, to stretch them out and make them go somewhere else, you have to warm them up, lube them up, 
and then gradually work them into a different position or longer. It's not like one day you can just go, okay, now I got go good mobility. <laughs> You're gonna go, all right, now I need to go to the doctor. So we just warmed all that up. Now's when we're gonna start giving it a little stress, okay? So first thing you're gonna do, straight arms, straight up and press them back behind you. Don't lean, keep your core perfect and back. Now down and press them behind you as far as they'll go. Shoulders wide again, don't let them burp. Wide, open, press, down, press. Palms forward, press overhead, down, press behind you. Okay, take them forward. Open up this way. Pull your shoulder blades together. Pull your fingers as far back as possible. And now close them down. One more time. Open them wide open. And down. Go up to the A shape. A. That's a Y. <laughs> now go to your A shape. Down to A. Pull back. You'll feel your shoulder blade roll back around you. And then relax. Pull them forward. All right, here's one of the favorites, wall angel. Straight arms, so you can actually press yourself up, stand up against the wall, flat up against the wall. Raise your arms up straight, try to press your hands to the wall, open them, and try to slide your forearms, elbows and hands, all the way down the wall. I like to relax at the bottom and come up through the front because I think that upper slide it does weird things in the shoulder. So press, open, and slide. And try to get these things as far back behind you as you can. Get your hands way back there. And again, don't, uh, that's not helping your shoulders. That's just tweaking your back. Slide them down. You're going to start burning a little bit. One more time. Up, open, down. Awesome, awesome. Stuff I don't like is when people do these insane <laughs> flinging their shoulders around. No. Maybe some nice, easy swimmers movements around. Swimming's tough on the shoulders. So if that is any, any way crunchy or feeling, not well, you know, these joints may crunch. You just may hear a little bit of crunching and popping and stuff in there. If it's not painful, uh, you know, that's pretty normal. It's part of having shoulders for a long time. All right, if you have a stick, Grab your stick right now, just like we use in the daily exercises. Another version of the overhead press. Pretty wide grip here, okay? Grab up and press as far back as you can, all right? Maybe widen up your grip slightly. Up, press as far back as you can until possibly you can go over the back. Don't stress if you can't do this. Work on it. It is a goal. Up and back. That takes a long time to work on. I've been doing this a lot. I had shoulders that were floppy and weak and I was built like a bullet when I was a kid. No way could I have done this without some sort of tearing motion. But until you have that mov movement, press as far back as you can. Okay, shoulders stay exactly where you are. Core stays strong and press. That's a good one. I like that. And this is a good party trick. <laughs> Depending on the party. <laughs> well, you might want to leave that party if people are doing that. So, scarecrow again can be done with no weights and you just rotate as far back as you can. And then you're down. Let them down as far as they'll go. Open as far as they'll go. Now I made a mistake there by leaning forward and leaning back. Keep your shoulders strong, open and down. Like you're trying not to move your core. And down, up and down. Definitely feeling a little fire in the shoulders. All right, now we are on to your basic strengthening exercises. And I wanna give you a demonstration of sort of the, the three motions as well as a couple exercises I want you to avoid at all costs. All right, grab your dumbbells. Of course, the overhead press 
is a favorite, fan favorite. With dumbbells, neutral hold, press straight overhead. Again, your elbows are forward, they are not out, they're forward, press straight up from your shoulders. Don't pinch them overhead, well, about 10 of these. Three, four, five, full extension overhead, six, don't lean back, seven, eight, take them over your head, and 10. What I'm talking about here is you want to gradually work so your biceps are next to your ears. They aren't up here in front of your face. Work so that you have that mobility. Open your armpits forward, pull your biceps by your ears so that you're getting use of all these trapezius muscles and all this meat on the back for overhead presses. Sweet, okay. A exercise I don't ever want you to do. Upright rows. You see the bros, okay, that's that motion, no good. Do not do upright rows. Elbows out, crush the parts of your rotator cuff, let them back down, and people tend to do them very heavy. No, well you can do, lateral flies. Lighter weights, straight out to your sides, don't go above your shoulders, and back down. Straight out and down, and I mean, straight out, maybe even behind you. Even favor your pinkies a little bit. Woo, that helps. Yurt. Down, favor the pinkies. Down, up, shoulders wide. Up, one more of these. Woo, that burns. <laughs> so essentially, the third direction-ish. Uh, that's, that's a lot like the lateral flies we just did are kind of a lot like overhead presses is sort of in the same direction. Front raises are in a different direction. You can do them flat or you can do them thumbs up. I guess if you want to, you can do them palms up. Those are a little awkward for me though. So knuckles up, let's alternate through them. Thumbs up and knuckles up, thumbs up. Nothing else as your body is moving. You can do this sitting down, sure. But if you're standing up, you get more action through your shoulders, through your core, through the rest of your body. Let's do one more. Knuckles up and thumbs up. Wow. It's burning. Ooh, it's burning. Okay, another good exercise, sort of in the third plane of things, is called a lawnmower. But I want you to kind of do a high, well, there are two lawnmowers here. So something to lean on. It's like you're starting a lawnmower. So your body is about, I don't know, what is this, 30, 60 degrees, somewhere in there, and pull like you're starting a lawnmower. Let's do about six of these. Five, four, three, two, one. One, all right, switch hands. You don't have to have something to lean on. You can lean on your own knee. Switch hands, row. They're rows, they're lawn mowers. They're rowing lawn mowers. Pull all the way to your shoulder, all the way down. Pull, roll your shoulder blade around, around. One more, around. Okay, another type of lawn mower is a perfectly horizontal one. This one you might need something to lean on. Your torso is exactly horizontal, or as much as possible, and you're doing a perfect horizontal pull, just like we did with the bands, but in this case, it's just with weights. I guess you can do this on your knee. It's a little awkward. This is an extraordinarily strong motion, so you're gonna be able to pick up a lot of weight here. All right, switch, if you want to. Knee or put your hand on a bench or something, pull. In the military, the MREs, you leaned it against a rock or something. <laughs> I said exactly that. As you heat it up, leaned it against a rock or something. Three, two, one. All right, those are your three motions. Up, forward raise, and horizontal pull. Pushes are good, but that's a little bit more chest. Definitely involves your shoulders. Pushes are fine, but for overhead shoulder work, those are your three. Let's go through 
three more versions, eh, at least two more versions. <laughs> the Arnold press. All right, knuckles forward, weights in front of your shoulder. As you press up, open your shoulder, open your armpits forward, and then roll them back down. Forward, press. Forward, press. Your elbows are going through that cone of power. They're not going out here. They're going forward and up, down in. Forward up, down in, okay? Arnold press, sweet. Switch out to some lighter weights because we're gonna do the pterodactyl. <laughs> Lean over as far as you feel comfortable leaning and then fly. This is a lot of trapezius, a lot of the back of the shoulders, not so much the top of the shoulders, but definitely rhomboids, which are a big part of posture. They're the muscle that's, muscles that pull your shoulder blades together into the spine. Uh, five, four, keep your back straight. Three, two, one. Good. If you happen to have uh, like plate weights, you can do some fun things with those. I call this the, the steel bus. <laughs> A front raise. Some people even do the front raise and they'll do a right turn and a left turn and then put them down. If you don't have something like this, it's no big deal. It just adds a little variety. Boop, up, down. Turn the bus right, left, up, down. I don't think it's worth going out and buying a plate, but if you're ever at, uh, I don't know, a buffet and they have really heavy plates, that could be a, a good exercise for you. Okay, so we have gone through the anatomy, the warm-up, which is push and pull in all the different directions, the rotator cuff work, the mobility work, the strength work, and now the stretching. So there's not a lot of stretching you can do for your shoulder. One of my favorites of all times, arm out against an obstacle, a rock or something, and lean in to stretch across your chest. Stand up tall. Oh, that's a big, nice stretch. Both arms, okay? Turn around, thumb up, find that thing, turn your body away from it. Arm is horizontal. Hold this for a few seconds. All right. Another one, a deep shoulder stretch. Take one of your arms, leave it where it is. Put it behind your back. Don't take your arm off. Put it behind your back at a 90 degrees. You can grab your other elbow over here. And now lean your head away from that arm that's behind you. And you'll get a tight, a deep tightness in your shoulder. If this hurts, don't do it or ease it up. Lean your head away and you'll find a little bit of tension right across the top. Oh, there it is. Right across the top of your shoulder. Oh, uh, yeah hang into that for a bit. Don't go crazy. It's like you're dumping water out of your ear. Strange analogy. All right, let's go to the other side. Arm behind you, dump. So, a little bit of workout today and a little bit of just lesson on how to take care of your shoulders, how to strengthen them, how to warm them up, and how to stretch them. Be nice to your shoulders. They're the only ones you get. Okay, last one, not a favorite, but it's a decent one. Arm out, pull it across, grab it. So this is gonna stretch kind of the back half of your trapezius muscles on the middle of your back, as well as the deltoids on the side, maybe a little bit trapez, or er, tra uh, arm. <laughs> Triceps, there we go. Deltoid is this teardrop shape one on your, your shoulder cap. Has a lot to do with what your shoulder does. Other side, arm up, pull it across. So you're like, pull it across your body and then grab it with the other hand. Big straight jazz hands. All right, good stuff. You may want to do that traction pull again. Uh, that's a nice one to finish things off, kind of get everything stood back up. But your shoulders will improve your posture. 
they will also make you more resistant to injury. Uh, I had a friend who him and his uh, black lab met at the corner of the house and the dog took his feet out from underneath him. He stuck out a hand, landed on it, rip, tore his rotator up, something fierce. If it were stronger, it may have, he may have been able to resist uh, the injury or it wouldn't have been injured as much. So that's what you're looking towards. Keep this tall and strong, better balance, better posture, and more resistant to injury and, and problems in your shoulders. Okay, open up, palms forward, that's it. All right, go get your shoulders strong. Keep coming back. This is the Parkinson's Gym. I'm Zach. This stuff works. That's all I got for you. See you later.